Chapter 14 You see, I like James, Ash said. I think he's a little soft on vermin, but I don't want to see him in trouble. I certainly don't want to see him dead. Poppy felt the way she had last night when her body was starving for air. She was frozen, too still to breathe. I mean, do you want him dead? Ash said, as if it were the most reasonable question in the world. Poppy shook her head. Well then, Ash said. Poppy got a breath at last. What are you saying? Then, without waiting for him to answer, she said, You're saying that they're going to kill him if they find out about me, but they don't have to find out about me unless you tell him. Ash glanced at his fingernails thoughtfully. He made a face to show that this was as painful for him as it was for her. Let's go over the facts, he said. You are, in fact, a former human. Oh, yeah, I was a vermin, all right. He gave her a droll look. Don't take that so seriously. It's what you are now that counts. But James did, in fact, change you without clearing it with anybody, right? And he did, in fact, break cover and tell you about the night world before you were changed, right? How do you know? Maybe you just changed me without telling me a thing. He shook a finger. Ah, but James wouldn't do that. He's got these radical, permissive ideas about humans having free will. If you know all about me, why ask me? Poppy said tensely. And you've got, and if you've got a point, the point is that he's committed at least two capital offences. Three, I bet. He flashed the wild hand, some smile again. He must have been in love with you to have done the rest. Something swirled in Poppy, like a bird trapped in her ribcage tr and trying to get out. She blurted, I don't see how you c people can make laws about not falling in love. It's insane. But don't you see why? You're a perfect example. Because of love, James told you and then he changed you. If he'd had the sense to squash his feelings for you in the beginning, the whole thing would have been nipped in the bud. What if you can't squash it? You can't force people to stop feeling. Of course not, Ash said, and Poppy stopped dead. She stared at him. His lips curved and he beckoned to her. I'll tell you a secret. The elders know they can't really legislate how you feel. What they can do is terrorize you so that you don't dare show your feelings. Ideally, so you can't even admit them to yourself. Poppy settled back. She'd seldom felt at, lo at a loss. Talking to Ash made her head whirl. Making, made her feel as if she were too young and stupid to be sure of anything. She made a forlorn and helpless gesture. But what do I do now? I can't change the past. No, but you can act in the present. He jumped to his feet in lovely, graceful motion and began pacing. Now, we have to think fast. Presumably everyone here thinks you're dead. Yes, but, so the answer is simple. You have to get out of the area and stay out. Go someplace where you won't be recognised, where nobody will care if you're new or illegal. Witches, that's it. I've got some cross cousins in Las Vegas that will put you up. The main thing is to leave now. Poppy's head wasn't just whirling, it was reeling. She felt dizzy and physically sick, as if she'd just stepped off the space mountain at Disneyland. What? I don't even understand what you're talking about, she said feebly. I'll explain on the way. Come on, hurry. Do you have some clothes you want to take? Poppy planted her feet solidly on the floor. She shook her head to try and clear it. Look, I don't know what you're saying, but I can't go anywhere right now. I have to wait for James. But don't you see? Ash stopped his whirlwind pacing and rounded on her. Her eyes were green and hypnotically brilliant. That's just what you can't do. James can't even know where you're going. What? Don't you see? Ash said again. He spread his hands and spoke almost pityingly. You're the one, the own... You're the only thing putting James in danger. As long as you're here, anyone, anybody can look at you and put the pieces together. Your circumstantial, circumstantial evidence that he's committed a crime. Poppy understood that. But I can just wait and James can go away with me. He would want that. But it wouldn't work, Ash said softly. It doesn't matter where you go. Whenever you're together, you're a danger to him. One look at you and any decent vampire can sense the truth. 
Poppy's knees felt weak. Ash spoke soberly. I'm not saying that you'll be much safer yourself if you leave. You bring your own danger with you because of what you are. But as long as you're away from James, nobody can connect you with him. It's the only way to keep him safe. Do you see? Yes, yes, I see that now. The ground seemed to have disappeared beneath Poppy. She was falling, not into music, but into an icy dark void. There was nothing to hold on to. But, of course, it's a lot to expect to ask you to give him up. You may not want to make that kind of sacrifice. Poppy's chin came up. She was blind and empty and, gid and giddy, but she spoke to Ash with utter contempt, spitting out the words. After everything he sacrificed for me, what do you think I am? Ash bowed his head. You're a brave one, little dreamer. I can't believe you are ever human. Then he looked up and spoke briskly. So, do you want to pack? I don't have much, Poppy said, slowly, because moving and speaking hurt her. She walked towards the bedroom as if the floor were covered with broken glass. Hardly anything. But I have to write a note for James. No, no, Ash said. That's the last thing you want to do. Well, after all, he added as she swiveled slowly to look at him. James being so noble and love-struck and everything. If you let him know where you're going, he'll come right after you. And then where will you be? Poppy shook her head. I... Okay. Still shaking her head, she stumbled into the bedroom. She wasn't going to argue with him anymore, but she wasn't going to take his advice either. She shut the bedroom door and tried as hard as she could to shield her mind. She visualised a stone wall around her thoughts. Stuffing her sweatpants and t-shirt and white dress into the duffel bag took 30 seconds. Then she found a book under the nightstand and a felt tip pen in the drawer. She tore a fly she tore the fly leaf out of the book and scribbled rapidly. Dear James, I'm so sorry, but if I stay to explain this to you, I know you'll try to stop me. Ash has made me understand the truth, that as long as I stick around, I'm putting your life in danger. And I just can't do that. If something happened to you because of me, I would die. I really would. I'm going away now. Ash is taking me somewhere far away where you won't find me, where they won't care what I am. I'll be safe there. You'll be safe here. And even if we're not together, we'll never really be apart. I love you. I'll love you forever. But I have to do this. Please tell Phil goodbye. Your soulmate, Poppy. She was dripping tears onto the paper as she signed it. She put the flyleaf on the pillow and went out to Ash. Oh, there, there, he said. Don't cry. You're doing the right thing. He put an arm around her shoulders. Poppy was too miserable to shrug it off. She looked at him. One thing. Won't I be putting you in danger if I go with you? I mean, somebody might think you were the one who made me an illegal vampire. He looked at her with wide, earnest eyes. They happened to be blue-violet at the moment. I'm willing to take that risk, he said. I have a lot of respect for you. James took the stairs two at a time, sending probing thoughts ahead of him, then refusing to believe what his own senses told him. She had to be there. She had to be. He pounded on the door at the same time as he was thrusting the key into the lock. At the same time, he was shouting mentally, Poppy! Poppy, answer me! Poppy! And then, even with the door flung open and his own thoughts ricocheting off the emptiness in the apartment, he still didn't want to believe. He ran around, looking at every room, his heart thudding louder and louder in his chest. Her duffel bag was gone. Her clothes were gone. She was gone. He ended up leaning against the glass of the living room window. He could see the streets below and there was no sign of Poppy. No sign of Ash, either. It was James's fault. He'd been following his mother's trail all afternoon, from decorating job to decorating job, trying to catch up with her. Only to find, once he did catch up, that Ash was already in El Camino and had, in fact, been sent over to James's apartment hours ago with a key.